Okay. Okay. So we'll uh, we're through the developers from Modrinth, uh, and if you don't know, Modrinth is a mod hosting platform. Um, I guess we'll just jump right into it. So first question: Any plans for maps, data packs, etc.? Uh, simple answer: Yes, we have we have plans for that. Um, we hope to get them out pretty soon, although we are working on a number of things at this time. Um, I guess... Anyone else have anything to add? Not really. Mod packs All was right. kind of the first step for this, so... That, that kind of shows our progress, you could say. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to add. Good luck getting out of that chair. Uh, we might have lost a question there. But, uh, will Modrinth have its own Twitch or YouTube? Um, probably I would say no. Just because we don't really have anything to promote on a Twitch or YouTube. Like, if we had actual stuff to publish, then probably, but we kind of don't. Okay. Um, I think the question that accidentally got deleted is about where we see Modrinth in a year. Yes. I think it's just in... it's out of order, so it, it might show up eventually. Oh, is it a, oh. No, no, I saw it, it pop up. Alright. Why do mod packs have a list of allowed URLs? How is it maintained? So the the list of allowed URLs is not part of the spec necessarily. It's part of um, what the host, in this case Modrinth, allows. Uh, currently we allow GitHub and GitLab links, although we are open to allowing more in the future. And this this isn't a list that the um, well it's an open spec. So, uh, other rehosts of, of Modrinth's services could have different lists, and launchers shouldn't specifically uh, enforce the list, because we could change it on our side at any time. That's mainly due to probably security reasons. Otherwise, malicious links could be posted. If you're trying to say something, we cannot hear you. Yeah, okay, turn your volume up. Any better. Hit V and turn the slider all the way up. Hey, turn the slider up. Do what I just did. Yes, yeah, it's okay. It's working literally any better. Yes, we can hear you now. Alright, yeah, so... Oh, um, really, the list is mainly for security reasons. I mean, if we allowed arbitrary links, then there's a good chance that at some point one mo a moderator could get, like, a malicious link. So, it would be really a security hole. But, um... Yeah, um, post a moderator and thought have their own lists. Okay, uh, next question here is will modpack project, uh, contain project and version IDs for Modrinth mods? Um, that isn't really needed. Like, there's the version file API route, which can give this information from a hash which is already included in the spec. So, all in all, it's it's possible for like a format version 2, but it's kind of unnecessary. Uh, why did you create Modrinth? What inspired the Modrinth pack format? Uh, I guess to start, why did you create Modrinth? Um, I think it's 
it's pretty well known in the community that um, there are some problems associated with having all of your mods relying on a single host. Um, and that basically gives them full power to do whatever they want with it. And um, we created it to be a community-driven, open-source project that anyone can contribute to and improve and make better. Um, and we're steadily working towards our goals of, of making it the best that we can make it. Uh, and then what inspired the Modern Pack format? Uh, a lot of discussion with like launcher developers and what they wanted and what they needed um, out of the format. And uh, we wanted to make sure that it, it wasn't exclusive to just pack, uh, mods that are on Modrinth. Um, and uh, originally we had that open to CurseForge CDN links, but um, that is no longer the case uh, due to the request from them. But we are still open to mods that are hosted on other platforms like, like GitHub and GitLab, and uh, we can expand that list in the future. Why do the Modern Projects have such weird names? How dare you call Greek culture weird? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's, it's all based on that, like, the old myth of the Minotaur and, you know, Minoan culture, ancient Minoan culture. And, yeah, the, everything kind of follows that same naming scheme. But, wait, what is, now it's like, what glitch? Minotaur, Minotaur, however it's pronounced. I don't speak ancient Greek, I only speak modern Greek. But anyway, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's all based on that same myth, because, you know, our name is Mod and Labyrinth. So it's kind of like, it, it all has to follow that same scheme. Uh, next question is, any plans for more login auth providers? Um, for well, for reference, currently we you have to sign in through your GitHub account, and I know that's that's not ideal for a lot of players who might not necessarily um, have a GitHub account but still want to be able to follow mods and and stuff. So yes, in the future we we will we'll have other logins, um, and we will have our own in-house login system. Uh, so you don't need to be associated with... Somebody, somebody asked Discord logins. That's a possibility. I don't know how likely it is, but it is a possibility. Uh, does Modrinth see web ads as sustainable given launchers exist? Uh, are there... Wait. Are there any numbers... Uh, are there any numbers? Uh, we I don't think we'll be giving out any numbers uh, currently, and we have plans to change the 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 ad system in the, in the not so far future. So any numbers we do have would be uh, not very relevant as, as terms of like revenue numbers. Uh, but we we see ads as. Uh, sustainable, but we also have other plans to um, for sustainability. And no, those other plans are not NFTs. <laughs> we just need to make that clear every time we say that. It is not cryptocurrency. It is not NFTs. Oh, and the, the ads will never be obnoxious. That's That goes completely against our, our purpose. Are there plans to support mods for other games? Simply, yes, but not right now. Right now, we're very much focused on uh, the Minecraft aspect, and we have a lot to do in order to get that where exact where we want it. Um, but eventually, yeah, we probably will be expanding it to other games. But I would see that as like a, a very long-term goal, not 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 anything you should expect anytime soon. Devalin, I know you asked that as a joke, but it's coming. It's coming. Does Modrinth mean Mod Labyrinth? 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> it does. Now, What's that the... does get the implication that Mothrinth is difficult to uh, travel through, which is kind of the funny part about it, is that it's not, it's supposed to be the exact opposite, but anyway, next question. <laughs> Uh, what's the Svelte Kit rewrite, and how does it solve all the problems? Um, well, I mean, you can argue about frameworks and stuff all you want, but uh, the main reason it solves all the problems is because it was uh, written from the ground up to be cleaner, and um, us, the developers, prefer writing with Svelte Kit, and we think it, um, it also makes it easier for people to contribute without having to figure their way through Vue and Next. Um, and so far, all of us have very much enjoyed um, developing in it, and it, it makes making components and everything much easier and simpler. And uh, it's making the development go a lot faster. So uh, yeah, it will be solving all the problems. <laughs> all does not mean all. Some of the problems. How is the project of the week selected? Oh, that's me. Um, basically, I just go through the recently created projects for the week, and I make a list of the ones that seem very cool, and out of that list, I pick the one that seems the coolest. That's it's It's not very intricate. Whatever I like it is based. That's Sign up publishing very biased. without uh, GitHub auth. Yep, yeah, we as we said earlier, uh, soon or I want to say soon. At some point, um, we yeah, will be moving away from. Trademark symbol, of course. Yeah, soon with the trademark symbol, uh, we will be moving away from pure GitHub auth, auth and we. Um, so yeah, that that will happen eventually. Uh, are there any craft bucket forks other than Purper that you've considered support for? Um, I mean, yeah, uh, we will be supporting most mod loaders, I think. I think our initial like list was. Uh, bucket, stick it, paper, and uh, purper. If there are any others, we probably could like add them. It's it's very trivial for us to add new loaders on like some sites. Uh, wait, how do I read the full question? <laughs> I, I think question. I... You need to read it before you put it up. Uh, yeah, or yeah I... Um, okay. Let's see, is there any way or any planned way to edit mod pages in... Does Did anyone ask this question and remember what it said? <laughs> bulk apparently uh in bulk the back button doesn't work okay um i don't know how exactly you would edit mod pages in bulk but uh you could do whatever you want with the api so you could write a script to do things in bulk if you want um yeah Is the creative reward system planned any time in the near future? Yes, that's what we're currently working on. Will there be a modern style launcher? Yes, we are uh, also working on that. Yeah, like we're actively developing it. Uh, that will be coming at some point after the the payouts, which is the last thing we talked about. OK, 
Could you see official Modrinth mod spotlights? I assume you mean like videos about mods? Uh, probably not, because we're not... Um, I mean, if a person makes one, they could probably... Uh, the author Ultimately, could we need somebody page. who wants to make them, and we don't have anybody right now who wants to make them. So if somebody is out there and willing to volunteer, you, yeah, you can do that. Just let, contact us before making it official. Yeah. Uh, Rehosts of modern services, what does that mean? Alright, yeah, I... I didn't explain this very well earlier, but since all of Modern's projects are open source, in theory you could uh, clone them all, make some changes, and put up your own uh, Modern site based on all the same uh, software. Um, so that, that's what I meant by that. Do you see Theseus as a rival? Theseus is our uh, our launcher, by the way, as a rival to launchers like PolyMC in the future. I think they would each have their their place. The Majinth one. Yeah, would I wouldn't obviously call it be, a rival. Yeah, the Majinth one would obviously be focused around Majinth, and uh, it would be very well integrated with that. Um, but I don't think. And then also, it's a it provides just a good general launcher. Yeah. Yeah, like how Fabric isn't supposed to be a rival of Forge, but people think it is, but it's really not. I mean, I would, yeah, like it'll have like CLA and stuff. Like, along with like a um, graphical interface. Yeah, to address the point about like power users, um, it is. The, the Mobrinth launcher is going to try and be more user-friendly than, um, than PolyMC, but I, we haven't really gotten any concrete stuff on that yet. I mean, we've started work on the, like, front end for it, but it's still very preliminary. Uh, we have a question here. Could loader metadata, particularly mod IDs, be exposed in the API? Um, possibly, the challenge with that is, that's, like, loader-specific concepts, and in this case, it would probably be fine, um, because pretty much every loader has some kind of concept of a mod ID, but, um, not all, not all loader metadata would necessarily be cross-loader, and then, um, what do you do? when you request that data for a, load, a mod that is on a different loader that doesn't have it. Um, so there's challenges there, but I can see that being a useful thing that we might want to do in the future. Will Modrinth support NFTs? You want to take it away? No. No. Thank you. How will our GitHub-based accounts be migrated? Um, well, they certainly will be migrated. Um, I, I would imagine you would still be able to sign in through GitHub as always, and we might. But the, um, you would you would just be able to create accounts that don't necessarily have to be associated with GitHub accounts. If by NFTs you mean neat fucking taters, then yes. Taters. Studs. Are we going to add full HTML5 slash CSS3 support with the exception of script text? Uh, no. I think the main reason for that is um, to not make mod pages a disaster. But we will be in the future adding more markdown or HTML elements that uh, will allow you to add some so some predetermined colors and styles like like a, maybe maybe like a info or warning bubble sort of thing to your your descriptions without having like raw 
CSS access. Yeah, because that, I mean, we all know where my, my MySpace went. What about, like, just a little bit of CSS? I mean, there there's going to be certain things that we allow, but we're not going to allow, like, everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. just a little bit as a treat. Will you be able to put any kind of mod on Modrinth? I don't know what that means by any kind. Specify but, what kind means. But the, certainly, we have rules, so no, you can't put any mod you want on Modrinth. Yeah, like, there are Why the would they support mods. JavaScript, though, like, at all? I, I, I don't... I what about SVG, though? No JavaScript. Wait, what about SVG, though? What is that? Like, SVG images? Oh, oh, yeah. Isn't that already supported? No, no JavaScript. That would be horrible. Do you guys want to look at some of these questions, see if you want to answer any of them? Test. Currently getting a whopping three frames per second, so... Okay, so it's not just this computer yeah, lagging. Getting TPS lag. Yeah, the TPS is in the drain. It's currently 20 SPT. Okay. Um, I can answer the one about Glitch. From Glitch. Okay. I just like press the button. Yeah, I'll, I'll press the buttons. Okay, so I can't turn around to read the question, but um, it's isn't it like what do the modern team get paid anything? Yeah. yeah. Um, the answer is no. Um, in in the future, we in the future we might uh, take a bit from like the search ad revenue, but that's pretty far out and. It's not likely to happen anytime soon. We're, we're going to prioritize getting creators their money first before we get anything. Yeah. Will there be any form of groups, organizations that you could list members and projects under? Uh, yes, I believe this is planned and sort of already exists in the API, but it doesn't really make any sense on the front end, but um, I think that's that's a feature a lot of authors would use. There's a lot of groups of authors that make projects, so yes, that that will be a thing. Probably like 75th on our priority list or so. Are there any plans for modern to support modded servers in the future, like serverless in the launcher? Uh, possibly. Yeah, there is a possibility. Um. But, it's not but again, right now the we don't have a functional launcher, so I think that would be um the priority for us right now. Uh, this, this question's about basically support for other loaders that, um, we haven't specifically added already. Um, in general, as long as there's, a f like, more than 
a handful of mods for a particular loader. Uh, if you can, if you want to request it, we will probably look into it. Um, yeah, like, um, I will say that there is, is a um, plan that is and for doing something like this, but it's far off in the future. Yeah. Uh, we, we obviously don't want just hundreds of loaders with like one mod each on them but also we're we're open to smaller loaders and we we've, we've recently added uh rift and mod loader support um which we've been we, yeah uh so there's not a ton of mods for those but um maybe in the future we also we have the validators on the back end for light loader we can probably add that soon yeah light loader will be coming very soon um so yeah we, we want to support as many loaders as we can um, but we also don't want to do that at the cost of the user experience, basically. And then another question, just how would you go about requesting support for a mod loader? Um, I would recommend first just bring it up to us in, in Discord. And if we think it's a good idea, then we could either add it right then or have you open a GitHub issue for it. Um, but I would recommend trying to talk to us first, um, just in the public Discord. Thank you for the free stuff. Ability to give mods more than three tags. Uh, Possibly, uh, there's a couple problems here. One's a UI problem. Uh, in search, you don't want to have these mod cards with like like multiple rows of tags on them um, because that would not be a great user experience. Um, however, there's as we add more project types, and um, at some point we'll be adding um, server side plugin support um, and those those kind of mods would use a different set of tags which probably also should be available to mods and then as the tag list grows it they might be more granular and it might make sense to have more than three so uh, for now I think with the current tag set that we or category set we have three is fine but if we add more in the future we might have to look into seeing how that uh, changes. And this, this question about is, is also similar to that. Are there any plans to let mods add tags like GitHub repos? Um, that is something uh, we've at least considered in the past. The, there is an extra challenge with that, which is that if you let people just type whatever they want, um, it's harder to group similar categories, and you'd have you, have, you end up with things like. Uh, like some some repos have like fabric MC as a tag. Some have fabric under or fabric hyphen Minecraft, and and that sort of thing. So it's it's harder to find and filter by the tag you want when they're user generated. Um, and currently our categories have icons, which help you recognize them quicker. Um, so yeah. Uh, I don't think that's currently in the plans, but maybe something like that could be considered in the future. Uh, Helvetica Toast, your book, I asked uh, Modern CEO, and he said Modern 2 has been live for months. So take that as you will. Uh, no, no NFTs, but what about NFTs? Now they're tree farms for context. Aren't those so laggy? Yeah, um... Those sure. would bring the TPS down even more than it's down on this server. Is there a Modrinth booth here? Uh, no. What can put in there? I mean, I guess we could build a giant logo, <laughs> but no, I don't. We don't have a mod a mod booth here. Yeah, 
probably the best we could do is just make something out of like charcoal or coal blocks. Will there be a distinction made between mod platforms and plugin platforms? So this is something that we've gone back and forth about a number of times internally, but I think we've settled on in the back end, they will all be the same, they'll all be mods, but they will be separated on the front end for just because that's what people are used to. So on the front end, you'll have like a mod section and a plugin section, but they could, they'd be, they're the same project. So a project like World Edit, for example, you click on it and it's the page for both the like Fabric Forge versions as well as the Bucket Sponge versions, whatever. Uh, so it'll be a purely front-end split. What does that mean for server-side uh, fabric or quilt plugins? Stuff Nothing. like nucleoid. It, it's just it's just a different terminology. So uh, it, it just to make it easier, so when people are coming here to search for bucket plugins, they're not searching under the mods category. Ah, so so plugins will be in their own category. Even though there is only like one sort of plugin loader, uh, Do, like, well, the plugins end up on the plugin page. Yeah, it'll just be based on what they're called. Uh, even though they're ba they're all mods. Yeah, like if Sponge calls them mods, we'll put them under mods. If Sponge calls them plugins, we'll put them under plugins. Makes sense. Uh, if if Modrinth is open source, does that mean someone could make Modrinth for uh, X game? Yep, you could you could make that. It would be a bit of work, and um, we wouldn't necessarily. I mean, we, we might help you with it a little bit, but it, it's not something we're gonna support. So you're gonna have to make sure you understand the challenges that you'll have to deal with in order to do that. But with that said, how much does it cost to host Modrinth? It depends uh, on what scale you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, let's just say, like, Modrinth for World of Warcraft, because I know there's a big modding scene for that game. I mean... Uh, it's it's hard for us to answer that, because we don't know World of Warcraft. We're, we're in Minecraft. We're Minecraft people. That's uh, fair. So, if... Maybe somebody could test that out for us. Like the only other game I know of oh, really is Herbal Space Program, and then I don't know anything really about that. Any plans to improve search Google search results? For example, uh, Batania Minecraft uh, was the example they gave there. Uh, yeah, we know the the SEO is not great on the current site, but uh, a lot of that's yeah. fixed on the on the rewrite. Um, Single-page web apps are rather annoying to get SEO right on. Yeah, it, yeah. This, we we know the SEO is horrible, uh, and we we also know what to do to fix it, and it has been fixed for the most part on the rewrite. So, um, yeah, that that'll just that'll just come at some point. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what oh. SEO is. Someone's having a little PvP battle. She shot me several times before, in my defense. Calm down. Uh, moving on. Will Modrinth Markdown support QOI images? I wasn't familiar with this, but I looked it up. Looks like some sort of image standard that's supposedly faster. Um, right now, we just support... I think it's just whatever a web browser does. Yeah, it's really up to the web browsers to support it. Um, yeah. Will Modrinth ever pull an epic April 1st joke? Uh, sure. What do you want it to be? What, what do you want us to do for April Fools, whoever asked that? 
I have some pretty good so ideas. <laughs> the tags, or or searched with like nature or something. Just without sacrificing usability. Uh, hmm. do what Discord did. I forgot what they did. Uh, they did like one time they they uh... quote unquote removed light mode. Next Oops, question. Sacrifices usability. <laughs> er, wait, wait. Uh, I got it. You can also we do, just like change the brand color slightly so that they, they look slightly worse. Oh yeah, 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 make it look like it's um like from the nineties or something. Just slightly tilt it, just ever so slightly, the whole thing. Yeah, one degree. Um, Alright, this next question is: Will Majinth eventually get bought out by another corporation? Uh. No, I don't think so. Nope. Can't see the future, but for now, our future is independent. It would take a lot of more money, like yeah. way more than anyone reasonably want to ever spend. So yeah, no. Also, <laughs> certainly have to meet moral restrictions. So basically, Overwolf isn't buying us anytime soon. Elon Musk will buy them all to make it better. This is a question about what exactly someone would have to do to request mod loader support and uh, like what exactly we'd want to know. Uh, really, just um, let us know about it and uh, I guess show that there's more than a handful of mods from multiple creators so it's not just your loader with your mods and and that's it. Like show that there's there's some sort of ecosystem there. Uh, I think that that should be about it, and I mean it'll we'll, it'll be decided on a case by case basis. So I'm not just gonna say whatever you tell us as long as it meets these requirements, we'll get in. But you know, just send a request. Have any of the Modrinth team met each other in person? No, not we were yet. About that though <laughs> earlier, <laughs> not yet. I mean, the rest of the team besides me all lives in the same, like, general area. I'm on the complete other side of the country, but it's possible for the other guys to meet up. Is in-house authentication system requirement for modern payouts? Uh, no. I don't think so. Uh, it should be... When we move to in-house, it should be a pretty seamless transition, and there's nothing that... about modern payments that would require that. Um, it would just... Just moving in house would make it more convenient for people to sign up. That's about it. Uh, this question is about monetization plan for mod packs. Um, it's not much different from how it is for mods, but obviously uh, the creators of the mods that are in the mod packs will also be getting a cut of the the revenue we haven't we don't have any final plans on what exactly that cut would be or how that would be figured out but there there will be some sort of cut there um thank you very much amy <laughs> Everybody drop a heart emoji in chat. Uh, do you plan to support non-jar add-on packs for mods with add-on mods? Um, uh, yeah, like, that seems like it would be pretty easy, like, that kind of goes with resource packs. Yeah, um, I'm not entirely sure what... This means non-jar add-on packs for mods with add-ons, but... I mean, I know some mods are able to be configured to, through, like, data packs. And we're adding data packs soon, so we could just, yeah. like, add an add-on category. Yeah, more project types will be coming. That, that's a pretty easy add that we could, we could probably work on between working on payments and other stuff. And hey, if anybody wants to submit poll requests... Uh, 
Uh, screen creation and sharing tool on Modrant, lots of prior art, but of course concerns about... Well, basically it was also talking about basically paying people for skins. I don't think Modrant wants to become like a a marketplace where you buy and sell goods because it seems like there's like liability there, people not delivering on what they want, what they uh, said that they would. So I don't think that's really a thing we want to get into. It's kind of in the same vein as having a, um, a source sharing tool or more of a distribution platform. Yeah. Um, and then and the other part of this was forums. I don't think... I know at some point we will be adding some sort of comment feature for projects, but I don't think like a full-on forum is really our... Um, our business it's it's distribution distributing mods and i don't think we want to scope creep that much into that at least right now and yeah forums seem pretty dead but but that's that's not even the reason so Uh, this question, it was a long one, but it basically was about signed CI integration. Um, we do want to... I think I think a great strength that Modrith can have is providing tools that make authors' lives easier. Um, and so, like, say, for example, building with GitHub Actions and getting that straight to Modrith. You can already sort of do that with... Um, with Minotaur or Gradle plugin, but as far as um, signed stuff, I'm not really sure about that. Um, but as far as just u utilities to, um, I mean, what, what exactly is meant by signed? Uh, crypt cryptographically signed, like a. Uh the idea I had for it was that if you set up continuous integration in a way where the mod author couldn't really tamper with it, you could have the continuous integration sign the output somehow, and then the modrant itself could verify that, and so that it would know that the mod author hadn't put any extra code in that wasn't on GitHub. Like encryption, like it's not it's it's not encryption, binary, but it uses the same, the same uh, math as encryption. Yeah, same it tools. basically helps guarantee that it's an anti-tampering feature. I mean, yeah, it could be possible. Like you know how HTTPS works? That's no. Digitally, like a, where basically like HTTPS is like you take a website and then it makes sure it's from someone who they know is the correct person. One major problem I uh, I could see with this... Yeah. Is, is that, yeah, you would have to trust the builder. So that would mean it would have to be hosted either on GitHub with, with finding some way to avoid the mod or just changing the GitHub actions to introduce that naughty code. Or it would have to be hosted by modern themselves, and then that's a whole can or of worms. Just review, or we just review, um, you know, the builds as they come in. Yeah, that's probably more convenient. I don't know, maybe it would make sense to have, like, a expected, like, hash value calculated as part of the CI for Modrinth, and then if something else gets uploaded then raise an alarm, but that's probably also something that already exists. I mean, it's it's possible, but the it's... thing I'd say is that we need a lot more moderation resources to do that, just because, as you know, there's kind of an expectation where it's not just a development build, and where it's in a ready enough state that we can review it, it's so we're not constantly having to moderate. Scandals are kind of a get-it-at-your-own-risk thing. Well, they are when you're a user, but this would be for releases. Uh, Is it 
possible? Yes. Are we going to implement it soon? Unlikely. Fair. Alright, here's a question. What does the verification and authentication process look like for Modrinth? How does the verification process look like or for malicious code slash malware work? Also, thank you for Modrinth. is great. Um, as far as verification and authentication of users, that's pretty easy because you have your GitHub profile linked. So in order to fool us, you would basically, into thinking like you're someone else, you would have to have like a GitHub account that looks like the original author and what? Class, take these. Uh, you would have to have a GitHub account with like years of history that makes you look like the original author, which is basically impossible. And, and anyway, like, usernames have to be unique. You just have to be an yeah. thief. Yeah, you would have to be crazy to, to do you that. literally have to steal their account. Yeah. So that, that is a benefit of having your GitHub account linked. When we have in-house authentication, uh, it would be a little harder to verify that, but... Um, yeah, you probably need to do it through some form of, like, OAuth. Yeah, you... Maybe if we did it with, like, OAuth with, like, development services, maybe. Yeah, just something to prove that you are who you say you are. But GitHub is a very easy way for us to do that. Uh, and then the other part of that was malware. Um, of course, on the first review of a project, we we pretty thoroughly look through um, to make sure it seems trustworthy. Um, but after that, we rely on user reports um, once a project has it's, been approved. It's worth noting that um, even after the initial review, like every file that's uploaded is still validated to make sure that it's like a valid mod. Like, you can't just upload any file and say that it's... You can't upload any file to modern. It has to be, like, a valid mod, a valid mod pack, you know, like that. Uh, here is a question. Why do you host Gnosis, or Gnosis on Vercel? Uh, simple answer. It's easy. It's simple. Um... But with uh, the rewrite, we'll be moving to Cloudflare pages. Yeah, I mean, honestly, eh, we already have it on our Airsoul, so why change it? Uh, Y'all are doing a re rewrite? Yeah, it's uh, quite far along. Rewrite on the front end. You can see it at rewrite.modernth.com. Uh, there's a lot it's being a done there. It's, it's a rewrite of the front end. Of the front yeah, end, yes. yes. Um and it's it's based on this float kit which is also what we're using for our, our launcher front end which allows us to share a lot of components and um it makes it's development based on a lot easier uh, what svelte kit svelte kit and that's the same thing you're using for the web view and the launcher yes that's correct uh, yeah yeah under tori and then for our final question how much does it cost to host modrinth as is and from from Gio, the the founder, he said five hundred dollars a month, about. All right, um, thank you everybody for for listening. I um, hope you got your questions answered. And this uh, rewrite is really cool. That's it. Thank you. I like the I like the button animations. <laughs> Thanks for that, everyone. All right, We're gonna set up the next time. one straight away. Uh, the next one is Gen optimization with Supercoder. Uh, that's in just a few minutes, so we'll get that set up. Uh, thanks for coming, and thanks for the talk as well. You did a great job with the Q and A.